Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> You've got all your Charger gear on because- That look good. Hey, bite down from play one now. He is dicked. Those guys don't all suck. I love you too, right? You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown. You don't let all the noise affect you. You don't worry about what's going on outside of the field. Oh yeah. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with two Duggan brothers like Kev Huggin Duggan. Hi there. And Kyle, the coach, Duggan. What's up, guys? All right. Uh, I did... I, I'm so <laughs> flabbergasted with this game. I'm flummoxed. I'm flabbergasted. I, I, I can't think of more complex words to describe my feeling at the end of this game. This was a game that we went into pretty much ready to lose. We're going up against a 7-3 to three team. The only teams we've beaten have been teams that have had losing records this year. So to expect us to come out with a win would be great, but just you, you don't expect it. But still, man, the way we lost... I just Ugh. shaking my head, man. I can't figure it out. Yeah, I'm at a loss, man. I'm I'm at a loss. And this was the game that really I think uh Lynn went ahead and just put the fork in himself because he's For done, real, dude. man. Dunsies. For real. It it's it's amazing how many different ways we can find to just totally blow a game. Uh and we'll get into all of the little knick-knack patty wax that happened in this game but first before we get too far throw into a it dog a bone Am throw right? a wool dog a bone because we're gonna <laughs> break it down here it's it's not gonna be too long folks because we didn't really put up that many points but uh let's see what happened here so even though we chargers started with the ball uh the bills were the first to put points on the board after a got a devastating 47 yard pass interference penalty uh, Chargers bounce back with a 79 yard drive resulting in Herbert connecting with Keenan Allen, but here's this new nickname. Fudgley misses his extra point and score <laughs> is the seven to six. He's the fudge kicker now. He's the fudge kicker. So bills add to their lead with a trick play touchdown and a 45 yard field goal in the second quarter. Charges into the second corner in a way we haven't seen yet, and we'll get more into that later. Uh, Buffalo extends their lead in the third quarter, but there's no need to fear. Joshua Kelly is here. Kelly makes a Superman leap into the end zone for a touchdown, and Herbert connects with Allen once again for a two-point conversion. The score sits at 24-14. to 14. And fourth quarter was set to be the Chargers' comeback quarter with the defense not getting one, not two, but three mother-loving turnovers. But all we were able to get with it was an extra three points from Fudgley. And the game ends weirdly yet again. Chargers losing 27-17. to 17. It's, man... I, I, I even just reliving it right there. It's like, man, how, how as with the defense getting three turnovers, that should have been the comeback right there. That, yeah. that should have been everything. They did everything they could to put the offense up, but it just wasn't happening. Yeah. I just sitting here and I just don't even know what to, I like, honestly, I don't even know what to say. It's like, we went through all those devastating close losses early in the year and I was it it always it hurts so bad, but then you're like, well, it's I guess it's better than just kind of getting beat up and not really being in the game. And now we've had two out of the last three games, we've just kind of gotten beat up. And I think it's safe to say this hurts way more. Like you're we're not even close to being it feels like we're not even close to really being in the game. There's like no momentum, nothing really rolling, no, no, no real spark happening. It's just like we just go out there and we we run plays and then we get off the field. It was crazy. It was crazy for me because, you know, we always talk about three phases. Like the defense was humming. They were, by all yeah. accounts, minus that big, you know, pass interference penalty to start the game. They were humming. Like Bosa played out of his mind. Bosa played out of his mind. You know, amazing. we lost Perriman pretty early on there. And, you know, three turnovers, like that's not Charger defense this year. Mm -mm. So when when the defense steps up and does this, our offense goes and 
shits the bed. Right. Listen, listen to these stats. Josh Allen threw for 18 for 24, 157 yards, a TD and a, and a pick, two sacks. His QB rating was 33. Yeah. Right. Wow. What, so what, like, what else do you want from the defense on that? Well, they they get the the dagger that really killed us. We gave them 172 yards on the ground to their rushing attack. Yeah, that'll which do that. is just absolutely like that cannot happen. Yeah. Um, and I don't know the explanation for it. We didn't ch- significantly change anything that we were doing. We, it just sounds kind of like a heart thing when you just get punched in the mouth like that. Yeah. It's just. Three phases. Special teams didn't offend me as hard this week. It's just a whole bunch of mediocre play, and then the defense stepped up at times, and it was just kind of like a. And then just to see how coach handled the end of that first half, and then the end of that game with that hail mary. Like, what? What is Herbert? What else can he do? You know what I mean? Like, he is trying to win these games from behind, and we're not. The coaching staff is not giving him the best opportunity to finish these games. Yeah. I mean, looking at, I mean, if you're going to toss out Josh Allen stats, let's look at Herbert's stats uh, through for 316 yards, um, 31 completions out of 52 attempts. So 52 times he passed. He He, threw 52 times. I know. Yeah. So I don't know what was happening, especially in the first half. I think he ended the half. I want to say it was 17 completions out of 27 attempts. Um, so a little bit more than half. And I mean, it ended it a little bit more than half, but there was a lot of dropped passes. I don't know what I was, was going on that. That, that the wide receiver. I don't know who to blame in those situations. If it's Herbert, not getting the ball where it needs to be, or if it's the wide receivers, just totally screwing it up. It looked like normal stuff we had seen every week leading up to this game. Like it, they weren't, they weren't bad throws. They were in play. He's putting it in places. Only those wide receivers can make those catches. And yeah. they just weren't he, making the catches this week. He had a couple of like poor throws, but there were a lot out of those of were just out, a lot of those were outright drops. They just dropped the ball. Hmm. Uh, Jalen Guyton had a really bad one. Eckler had one. Keenan Henry had, a couple. had Hunter Henry had like two. Everyone on the, was just dr- dropping the ball and like and they were all in real. You drop a pass that is a that is a series drive killer. It just goes from being what 10, 12 yards to zero and loss of down. Mm-hmm. So does just kill your drive. You cannot have drop passes like that. On the bright side of his performance, he's one of two quarterbacks who have thrown for 3,000 plus yards over their first 10 career starts. And the other person that did that is Mahomes. So (laughs) great in our division. (laughs) The thing is, like, you got to grasp onto some things, you know, like the fact that he's still playing well, even though he didn't have the best game, he still threw for 300 yards. They asked him to throw 52 times. I know. Like, and then the times when, when he, we were and he a, was getting hit all game. Yeah. He was getting blasted. Like our offensive yeah. line played like garbage. The amount of pressures they were getting on him were all across the line. Pipkins, yeah. I think, was the worst out of everyone. I, I don't Trey Turner's numbers. equally bad. That's what's yeah. so scary. The guy was a pro bowler, and he doesn't look any better than than Division Three Pupkins year two. You know, yeah. like that right side of the line is not good at all. The fact that our left side, which was what we were scared about, is like. They're solid. They're not. They're not just they're not letting good, people not through. Yeah. Awful. Compared to the right side, they look pretty damn good. And he's still putting up these numbers. It says a lot right. about him and what you know. Get him, and I think we talked about it last week. Get him an offensive line. Get give him if you give him time, this guy is going to pick you apart. So get him an offensive line. Balaga and Feeney. Other than that, you need three new guys. Like yeah. you, 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 Trey Turner. You cannot pay him that kind of money. He needs to be cut instantly. And then you you have to find three brand new guys to fill those spots. At least two. At least both guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just it's just it's ugh, frustrating. It's such a br- yeah, it's it, so frustrating. It, it's frustrating. You can't really describe it any other way. And that was the other thing too. Watching, I mean, Herbert Herbert's not just a mobile quarterback. Herbert's a quarterback that can run, and we've seen him do it earlier this year. Right. And I think he had like negative two rushing yards this game so that felt like an aspect of him as a quarterback that wasn't necessarily utilized this game whether or not the opportunity was even there i can't even say that's you know looking back at hindsight but it's it was just a game that everything just felt completely out of sync nothing felt like it was working right the end of that second half uh for those of you that don't know there was time running down on the clock 
it looked like we were going to go for it on a fourth down. Time is ticking. Time is ticking. And eventually Lynn calls a timeout. Why? I don't know. And then punts. And then we punt. So I don't understand that. And he didn't either. Clearly. I mean, <laughs> if you look at him on the sideline, when they're redoing that, when they're going through that series, it was just like, he, he doesn't, it looks like he just got there and he was like, <laughs> he didn't know what was happening in the game. Yeah. There was an interesting, it was an interesting quote on that, you know, because what he did was so polarizing that people were starting to talk about us again and not in a good way. Whoa. Like things that I listen to, like part of my take, some of these things like went in on, on him and how shitty he was and how bad of play calling he did and time, uh, how he controlled the time. Uh, one one uh, Schwartz, an eight-year NFL offensive lineman, tweeted, I've watched a lot of football in my life. I've never seen an end of the game like the Chargers just had. They're so poorly coached. So <laughs> somebody that's not even doesn't even have any skin, just like, yeah, that is the worst coaching I've ever seen. Like, what do you, what do you want to do? What, what do we do here, guys? Uh, I, I'm, I'm was a little surprised that he still had a job this morning. hundred percent. I, I was... you, everyone knows that I try my best to pose the coach's side of things and allow us to see different angles. I have no clue how he still has a job. That's no. how poor that whole game went. There was n- nothing about it. Did he, did he do anything for everything that a head coach can influence? He did. He did a piss poor job of. Just so shit. I, I, I do. I honestly don't know. How, I don't know what the point is of keeping him on. I guess you. What are your other options in house? You give Gus a shot. Um, I, I don't. Maybe that's it. They just don't like. They don't like the other options. Well, uh, but I don't know how Anthony Lynn is still the coach. If, if, if these other teams are firing their coaches, I don't know how he still is. Well, and uh, there was a stat where the Chargers haven't fired a coach mid season since like nineteen ninety eight. So like, nice. I don't know what that stat is all about, <laughs> but that is a stat. And I thought it was interesting. Like after the game, I think we have a soundbite here of uh, Daniel Popper talking to coach Lynn and he does not sound like somebody I would want leading me into battle. Dude, what has happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is, <laughs> what on earth? There's something going on in his personal life that is just screwing everything on the field because this is not wh- how we talked about this guy to start the year. He demoted I, his buddy, and then all of a sudden, he's man. He's, he's just falling apart. Well, well let's yeah, yeah, let's listen to Popper and see what he had to say uh, about Coach Lynn. Okay, at the end of the first half, uh, you opted not to use your timeouts earlier in that drive when you completed some passes inbounds. What, what was the thinking there besides not using behind not using your timeouts there? I'm not sure. Before the half, yeah, at the end of the half. And then you ended up using your timeout before you punted. But previous, you know, the, you, I, used, you completed- I used the timeout before we punted because we, I was actually going to go for it right there, you know. And, and I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a little, a little closer, but it was, a, it was a full fourth and two. I didn't like the defense they came out in. I changed my mind and punted, you know. And no sense in taking all three timeouts to the locker room. So I, that, I, I burnt that timeout. I called it before you get ready to call the play. But Austin was tackled. Austin was tackled in bounds, and you let 15 seconds tick off the clock before you took the timeout. Why, why not take the timeout earlier there to save time? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, and then I'm not, I'm not sure that what, what you're saying. Yeah, so. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm I'm not I'm not sure I'm 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 not sure what you're saying, man, dude. You there is no confidence. You lack everything right now, Lynn. Everything. Here's the other thing, on that end of the first half, and this also comes from Dan Popper, which I found like it, it, Popper's not holding back, man. Popper, I like, not I like Popper. A lot. I'm totally cool with Popper. Another thing that Popper said, he said one thing I noticed while rehashing Anthony Lynn's decision yesterday. The Chargers could have simply let the clock run out at the end of the half. The play clock had four more seconds than the game clock. They didn't even have to punt. Like, what is, what do you mean? We, there's no sense in taking timeouts to the locker room. Like, this isn't money, yeah. dude. Like, it's not like spend it yeah. if you got it. Like, that's not how timeouts work. And yeah. with our track record of getting punts blocked, I wasn't real hyped to see them jog out on the field. If if you're no. if you're not gonna try to score, just let the clock run out. Exactly. Like, why give these guys even a, a thought of a chance? Like, blessedly, they just took a knee, but still, like, 
we're the Chargers, man. Like, if we give them the ball again, if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. So we were three and seven in this game. We have three wins on the season. Why are you not trying to get your team back into this? I don't understand. I don't understand it. I, I mean, that's the thing is it, it when you look at Herbert throwing for 52 yards, I mean, clearly they're letting him cook. They're letting him do what he can do. They're not. F- I 52 mean, they are throws. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, 52 okay. attempts. Got it. Not not quite that many completions, but throwing for 52 times. But at the same time, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I feel like they're throwing stuff at the wall and seeing if it'll stick, but like not aggressively. Like, oh, just yeah. like, okay, just try this. Okay, just try this. Like, there's no, um, ah, fuck it. They just don't have they, the drive. Like, to, <laughs> to call the they're, plays. They're, they're, they're clearly, he's clearly scared of how he's lost these games at the end of games in the past. Cause he's, his goal, if you just look at his decision making, his yeah. goal is to Ben, has been to leave as little time on the clock as possible for the other team. That is not being aggressive. That mm-hmm. is not trying to give your guys enough time you need the offense has to have enough time to actually score the points who gives a shit if you leave 10 seconds on the clock right like he's playing scared he's coaching scared and it fucking sucks it it absolutely does i mean you, there's a quote here from austin eckler which i found kind of interesting because we've had talks this year about uh coaches calling out players and players calling out players now in this quote Eckler doesn't necessarily call out the coach specifically but if you kind of read between the lines it kind of feels that way uh Austin Eckler said he was surprised to get a run play after the Hail Mary I actually was we needed to throw the ball there just to make sure it's either a touchdown or an incompletion just to stop the clock anybody knows that yeah everybody knows that yeah like you knew that we i know that like if austin has to say that out loud like it's so obvious right well they posed it to him that way it was probably like were you surprised that you guys ran there he's like yeah Yeah. it kind of was it doesn't make any sense whatsoever no yeah so yeah man that's uh yeah i'm just not good coaching again like that's his this that's that's not a shane steichen saying hey coach let's run the ball here i that makes me believe that he's calling the plays. That's like no, the I, only thing they that cut I can... to the sideline a few times on this game, and he was like looking at his call, his play sheet and like making calls. Like it was very clear that he's taking over a lot of the play calling. Hmm. In my opinion, I can't say that for a fact, but when they would cut to the sideline, Steichen would be over his shoulder, and Lynn would be saying, Lynn would be calling out whatever the fuck it was. Well, it feels that way too because our shots downfield, our attempts downfield are not there. We're now, I know that the Bills play a little bit more conservative defense based on our conversation um, last week with the Bills fan, but it, it, we just we didn't even really take shots downfield. Like 10, 15 yards was the furthest we were going downfield, and that just feels very Lynn-esque to take those conservative, high-percentage, short-yardage passes. I, I don't know that Herbert had the time, dude. Like, there was very little time that he had to try to make any of those deep passes. I mean, really, that Hail Mary at the end was, like, the closest thing to it, and that was just lucky for Tyron Johnson to come in and snag the ball and damn it, it couldn't get in the end zone. <laughs> what we saw earlier in the year was max protection and sending two guys on deep routes. Like that's, we were doing that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, now it seems like we're doing, we're, we don't have, I always have a tight end in there for chipping. We have a lot of empty sets where there's no even running back help. Um, and when there is running back help, Josh Kelly cannot pass block to save his life yet. He's just no. not, he, he can't do he it. He had yet. one, he had one good chop block. I saw the nope. other day that led to he, a big play. He, he attempted one. to he chop block and the guy <laughs> sk- 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 around it. No, there, was, got a there was actually one. I remember writing it down being like, I need to remember this. Cause it's the only time I've ever seen him block somebody effectively. Right. Sorry. Yeah. We were yeah. the, the announcers were quick to point out when Joshua Kelly missed one of those blocks, but yeah, he whiffed, he whiffed for sure, but he had one good one. Yeah. Trying to be positive. So maybe he's he's improving, but it's not there yet. (laughs) Ten shit blocks for his one good one. That's an improvement. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't want this to be like just totally stopping on Anthony Lynn's nuts. I mean, he seems like a good guy. Oh, I would love to. I'm in. Let's go. Uh, I'll put on my steel-toed Zodiac work boot. I mean, I guess. For for me, especially after watching him in Hard Knocks, like, he seems like a great guy. The players are obviously behind him, and didn't just waltz into that position. I mean, he got in that position for a reason. So I'm trying to give him as much credit as could possibly yeah. be due because he's still a human being. Like I still, I, I don't hate him, but 
if you're not the right guy for the job, then you need to step aside or know when to call it. Like, yeah, I, I, that's Anthony Lynn is a good coordinator. I think his like raw, raw personality players probably love him. And he, you can do that and be a coordinator or a position coach. And he would probably, he, he did kill it doing that. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't seem like he has any awareness of what's going on in a game that a head coach has to have. You have to know everything that's going on all the right. time. Exactly. There's not a, oh, the defense is on the field. I can turn it off and go talk to the guys on right. the sideline. You have to know every, you have to know injuries. You have to know personnel packages for offense and defense. You have to know timeouts. You have to know clock. You, like, you have to know everything going on. You're, you're a manager even more than you are a motivator. Right. Especially if you're calling plays. Like, And, and you shouldn't right. be seeing him at the end in a conference going, just trying to answer a question and sounding like he just waltzed out of the old folks home going, I, I don't know. Like <laughs> you gotta like, you gotta have a response, dude. Like even if it's not the right response, you gotta have something. And if a yeah. conviction and in a it. Con some conviction, that was the word I was trying to think of. It was some conviction in your words. And, and if you're the one to blame, Dude, recognize it. Like you step can up and say, step yeah, up I messed and say up. it. Like you yeah, save yeah. so much face if you just go, you know what? I made some calls that didn't quite work out in my favor, but we're gonna, you know, we're gonna practice and we're gonna get back to it. That at least shows some character to you as a coach instead of just going, I don't know. Like, I get it. Like this whole season is I don't know. Like there were so yeah. many issues this season that we don't really know what the issue is. But dude, if you're the coach coming out there and you're saying I don't know. You're the reason, dude. Yeah. You know sure. what is not an issue this year? Talk to me. Joey freaking Bosa. Joey Bosa, dude. <laughs> dude, Good three Lord. sacks in one game. Career high. It, oh, my it, God. He was out of his mind. He hit the mind. quarterback five times, threw six tackles for a loss, a pass deflection, a fumble recovery, and eight total <laughs> tackles. Yeah. The guy is an animal. And here, here's here's like a little thing. I don't know if this is true. Maybe I just saw it at the end and pinpointed it. And you guys check me if I'm wrong. His normal celebration doesn't seem to be there. He's almost like, he I'm here to the get the job anymore. done. Yeah. No, he's like, I'm here to get the job done and get off the field. It's not a like hype train. I'm going to get everyone excited. It's like, yep, I made the sack. Now it's offense. Do your job. And it, 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 to me, it, that is exuding some frustration that he has. Um, with everything going on with the coaching staff, with the, with the way players are playing. And he called him out the, last week in an interview saying, if you're in a position to make a play, you got to make a play. Right. And that's clearly what he did. Yeah. I, I feel like he's taking every part of the defense uh, ownership. Like he, he's owning everything. And so he goes out there and performs, but if he can't walk away with a win, I, his was the only post game interview that I watched completely. I couldn't get through Lynn's halfway. Cause it was just like, I, I can't like, this is too yeah. frustrating, but I listened to Bosa's and you can tell that he, even though he's performing extremely well, he's like, if we don't walk away with a win, then we're not doing enough. So right. Let's he, just let him be the coach. I do. Yeah. Like, that sounds awesome. Like, if yeah. if he's going to come out there coach. and say that, like, like I, you know, I'm very happy to be where I am. And, like, somebody brought up that he was, uh, that he had passed Seau for the most sacks, which was just like, he's like, that's cool. But I mean, it's hard to celebrate in a situation like this the, to when you don't get that win. And, um, it was just, it was frustrating, but yeah, you're right. He doesn't do the shrug anymore. And so now whenever he seems to get the sack, he does that flex. And yeah, that just seems like, gets let me just field. get up my aggression. Like, yeah. and then, all right, let me, let me get out it, of the it, way. It, it, to me, it, it doesn't, he's not trying to celebrate with his teammates as much either, which to me is, that's frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, I had that experience in high school where I, I love football more than anything. And when a well, play was made, even if it wasn't me making the play, I wanted to go celebrate with a teammate and they're like, yeah, whatever. And they got off the field. And so that can lead to, I don't know. I, I'm hoping this allows him these last five games to take some leadership and people feed off of that passion that he has. And he can start to step up and, and I know he's not a verbal as much of a verbal leader, but maybe he can work into that a little bit here. Um, checking people. Yeah. I have like, this is what you want to see. Like these are the bright lights and the darkness that we're in right now. It's like seeing joy play like this and still not be satisfied. Even when he had career yeah. highs and, and tackles and sacks, like you need that. These are the kind of guys you want on your team. This is how you build that culture. We always talk about, about not being a, 
perennial losing team. Like these are the guys you need. We paid him. He got his money. Mm -hmm. He didn't do what our offensive line guys have been doing where they collect, they chill, they're good. They're done. He got his money and he's putting out, he's, he's performing. So I love Joey Bosa and I'm so glad we resigned him. Oh yeah. Big time. Yeah. No, he's, he's showing, he's showing the leadership. Like I, I actually, I had to kind of scroll back up again and go, is he a team captain? And no, I don't see the big C on his Jersey. So it wouldn't surprise me if next year, I mean, because we saw him even in hard knocks when he was coaching up some of the other players and showing them some technique like that. That's what you want in a captain or at least in a leader. So it wouldn't surprise me if we see him with a big C on his on his jersey next year. Yep. Um, and then looking at the I mean, looking at the rest of the defense, uh, somebody put out the Chargers coverage stats against Buffalo. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to read this so so campbell was thrown at four times he gave up four passes for 87 yards and a td so that bad. was our guy filling in for casey hayward i couldn't believe Harris. that he was the main dude like i know he's filling in for casey but like shouldn't chris harris fill in for casey or uh, he was in there he was in there chris harris was in slot. the inside yeah he's playing yeah. the slot guy that's okay. what he's on all year gotcha so he he was thrown at twice he allowed one catch for 14 yards um davis had a good game was thrown at five time, gave up three uh, catches for 17 yards and had the interception. Right. Adderley gave up a touchdown, was thrown at once, a two-yard touchdown. And Jenkins was th thrown at three times, gave up three for 12 yards. So it's it's not the... I don't know. I don't know. It's not yeah. great. Cam Campbell well, giving Campbell, up that. Yeah, Campbell's the glaring issue on all of that. Everybody else gave up less than 20 yards. When he in you know, Allen didn't have his most amazing game like i thought our secondary was pretty serviceable by all accounts it was what kyle was saying before it was the run game that really hurt us mm -hmm. so uh, you know for campbell having giving up that that's not great they clearly targeted him and picked on him a little bit but yeah i don't know defense played well i mean even looking at campbell's you know giving up 87 yards and a touchdown like it, I mean, what was Josh Allen's stats? How many yards did he throw for? Less than 200, right? Yeah, 150 something. Yeah, like that's not a team. That's not, that's not why we lost the game. No, no. Uh, clearly not. And it, it's, you, you can't, I, I think this is the one game that you really can't blame the defense for, for the loss. Yeah, then James Crape tweeted out, why didn't you call timeout for 15 seconds before eventually doing so? Anthony Lynn, I don't know. That's a 2020 Chargers season in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> pretty I don't much. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's what this podcast has been like. We don't know. Like, nobody knows. Well, <laughs> do you guys do you guys want a sad, st uh, sad stat that I just realized? Oh, dear. Yeah, let's um, soak in it. So we've been doing this for two <laughs> seasons now. Um, since we've started doing this, we've only won nine games. Wow. In two seasons. Are you saying that we're the so, problem? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. I'm not saying we're not. <laughs> I'm just saying when I think about this podcast, I don't think about victories. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Our victories have been few and far between on this podcast. And... It doesn't look like it's going next to year. Next, next year, soon. boys. Next, next year. Next year. Next, year. next year. next year. All right. Uh, looking at the injury report, uh, we all saw uh, Denzel Perryman kind of go down on one of those plays. I uh, guess it apparently was a back injury. Yikes. Um, but the x-rays came back negative. So that's a positive. That guy's yeah, just a like... wrecking ball. He flew through there with his head leading and does a front flip and lands on his back. Like, what the hell? Like, what he's are you, a missile, what? dude. He's just a missile, man. And, it, and unfortunately, it gets that little that little guy hurt a lot. He, I mean, it right. seems like every year he's missing multiple that games. little guy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that about him. He just knocked over Mackay Becton last week. <laughs> right. Doesn't doesn't change his stature. No. And maybe that's why he's getting hurt, because he's trying to hit these 400-pound linemen as hard as he can. That's true. Do you still feel that you don't think he's going to come back next year, Kyle, if he's playing his heart out like he is right now? I would love to see it. I just, I think he's going to want money. Is This would be his final contract that he's going to sign. Mm -hmm. um, and we're clearly using him as an alternating guy for run stopping. Um, so if if he's willing to take a contract that's fair, I think that we, we would bring him back. But I don't know. I think he could go somewhere and, and get a little bit more money somewhere else with the depth that we have at linebacker now with, 
with going first round with Kenneth Murray and um, Drew coming back next year and Nick Vigil being cheap and ha- playing really, really well. So okay. I think it's tough to tough to resign him just for the, the whole salary cap. I just like how fair. Hardy hits people. I know. Just Me too. I well, he's, like just, he's playing with a fire football. right now. Yeah. Like yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's, he plays hard. Yeah. I, he's also hurt every year. Well, let's let's ignore that stat. Um, who else yeah, is hurt right now? Uh, let's see. Balag is out with an illness of some sort. <laughs> I didn't sort. hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't if you tried. <laughs> but you didn't not hurt him. Um, <laughs> Kalen Balaj is still uh, nursing an ankle slash calf. Uh, Casey Hayward still dealing with his groin. Melvin Ingram still on IIR and Nuchena Nwosu still shoulder chest injury. I'm kind of, I'm kind of low key, like relieved that Casey Hayward is hurt, hurt because his game against the Jets was so bad that I was like, he has to be hurt. So now yeah. for him to finally right. actually end up on the injury report, I'm like, Oh, phew. Like our future is not just all <laughs> shit. We have no corners. <laughs> <laughs> right. At least maybe we can blame it on something. I yeah. I kind of feel the same way. It's it's part of that mentality. Like when Philip Rivers played while he was hurt, like he still seemed to be able to get stuff done. Casey Hayward playing when he's hurt doesn't seem to be doing anybody any favors. So right. I, I can it's corner. Better. Yeah. I think it's better yeah. for him to be getting better and not just like hurt, <laughs> straining himself when he's trying to cover anybody out on the field. Um all right. Well, now let's look over to somebody who's better than Anthony Lynn, uh, Kyle, the coach Duggan, <laughs> and see what he's got for us this week on Coach's Corner. What do you got for us, Kyle? Yeah, so I wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to dig in a little bit on our turnovers. Um, we always talk so much about how the turnover game influences uh, the final outcome or the final score so significantly uh, because it, it's a big momentum play. You know, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, um, is that you need momentum. And the Chargers always seem to have something that could have gone their way, like score a touchdown, miss a PAT, um, get force a three and out, have a fumble. Like there's always something that just kills any momentum that we have. Um, and in the fourth quarter, we were down 24-17 or 20, yeah, 24-14, 24-17, the whole fourth quarter. And we created three turnovers and and scored three points off of it. So in my mind, I'm like, that's that's how on earth do you only score three points off of three turnovers? Um, so I just wanted to go back and look at the very first play run after the turnover. Because a lot of the times you have that momentum, you need to cash in on it. You need to take a chance, fire the ball downfield, hope for a yeah, worst case scenario of pass interference. Um so it's like it's you're either incomplete or a pass interference. Just throw, especially we got a guy like Justin Herbert. Get the ball downfield and and try to ride that momentum a little bit. So I went back and looked at all three turnovers. The very first play we ran after. Uh, so the first turnover we had, um, fourth quarter we were down twenty four fourteen. It was Nick Vigil forces the fumble. That effort play ran down the ball carrier, uh, forced the fumble, and this year Adderley recovers. Um, we got the ball at the Buffalo 46 yard line, definitely within range to take a shot at the end zone, um, try a trick play, do something. Our offense has been struggling. Um, our first offensive play, the charger favorite, the draw. Um, we just take two steps, hand the ball off to Eckler, very low risk, a medium sized upward reward. Luckily Eckler is really good and has great vision and he got 13 yards out of it. But there was never a chance to score a touchdown. That that's one thing that I we forgot to mention. This was also the first game that we got Eckler back from his injury and definitely came to play. At least that He's yeah, back. that portion of yeah. Kyle's uh, bold prediction of him getting over a hundred yards definitely came true. So having yeah. him back on the running game certainly made a difference uh, mm-hmm. on that aspect of it. Yeah, they didn't limit his snaps at all either. No, that he, boy, he came that back boy to played play. some football. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so right off a of turnover, we run a draw. It's just like, like that's not taking a shot at all. That's not trying to build off of this momentum and like change the game, no. the momentum of the game. You're not looking like the Bills where you're doing a backwards pass to your wide receiver who's going to throw it to another wide receiver right. and score a touchdown. Like we, we don't get creative with that. And I guess we're just too scared to make those kind of plays. I get, and they're, they're the ones that were, they're the ones that are, have, they have, a, they're in the playoffs right now and they're trying to win a division and they're, doing double passes while we run draw after a, a fumble recovery on their side <laughs> of the field. 
so it was just weak and then that that drive ended up um we we got it down to first and five at the 11 and then we ran it twice with Eckler and then we tried a speed option with Justin Kelly for minus we ran the ball three times first and five at the 11 and then ended up kicking our field goal so we got our three points um but yeah so it was just like Man, that, we didn't really take advantage of that at all. Um, next, next, next turnover it was the very next series. We kick our field goal two plays later. Um, Josh Allen fumbles, fumbles a snap, and Bosa recovers it. Um, we were down twenty four seventeen at this point. Um, we get the ball at our own twenty two because they had just completed like a forty four yard bomb. Um, but our first offensive play right after that, we run a naked boot. Um, which means you have no no one blocking the backside in. So we fake a, a run. Justin Herbert rolls out, but there's no one blocking that backside in. So he's going to have pressure in his face right away. Um, so he's just trying to get the ball out quick to Hunter Henry. Hunter, Hunter catches the ball behind the line of scrimmage, runs up field for like a gain of two or three. Um, we end up going three and out on that play, um, on that series. So we, again, just not taking a chance. We're not throwing the ball deep. You don't turn the ball over and think, all right, let's, capitalize kind of another conservative not big time opportunity high ceiling play um finally fourth quarter again the next series we're down 24 17 again it's a one score game mike davis intercepts josh allen at our own 45 so right at midfield our first play you guys want to guess what it would have been uh draw a draw to austin eckler <laughs> yeah picks up one yard so we turn Fucking three hell. turnovers and we run two draws coming right off of the pick. It's like that is the most conservative, scared play calling. Like it, you, you make a big momentum play, you gotta ride it. You gotta take a chance, throw the ball downfield, and hope for something to happen. Don't just sit there and think, okay, now this offense that hasn't been working all game is gonna magically start working if we just nickel and dime it down the field. Um, so I. I just was very frustrated after looking at those plays that we had off the turnover um, and just did nothing with it. Created three points off of three extra possessions. Doesn't that feel like Shane Steichen had his play calling taken away from him? You know, remember all the gadget Absolutely. plays, all the crazy stuff Steichen was doing that wasn't successful, but he was taking chances. This yep. looks sounds like just like Anthony Lynn football that is what we had week one. That those three plays are very indicative of our head coach stepping in and and muddling the offensive play calling. Mm. And here's the deal about being a play caller: you have to get in a rhythm. You, you, it, it sounds it's hard to explain, and it's it's hard to understand until you call plays. But when you're in a rhythm calling plays, it seems like everything you call works because you just have this natural. You've you've studied so much and you've gone over your 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 scouting report so much that you just get into this rhythm and it's like you have a momentum in play calling. Um, but when you have two guys calling plays and bouncing ideas off each other before the play, impo it's impossible to get into that flow. Mm. Um, so I, I think yeah, I think Steichen is is, is a great disservice to him by Anthony Lynn stepping in right now. Hmm. Wow. That's very insightful. Thanks for looking that up, coach. Yeah. yeah. It, it, constantly we hear from the fans how, you know, we're, we're used to seeing the run, run pass or just the cons consistent conservative play calling uh, to have a big game changer, like a turnover happen three times. And for us to just run those very conservative play calls afterwards, like, that's just indicative of this entire season and how how can you expect the game to change if all you're going to do is call these teeny little plays and just hoping that somebody finds a hole i guess and makes a big run i don't know man it again we can't seem to figure it out here on charger chat but at least coach is able to shine some light on what might be going on so let's get out of coach's corner while we can and turn down to fan focus. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Make a run. Our this week. positive Two podcast is, is taking a bad turn. <laughs> run for your life. Who do we got for fan focus this week, Kev? Uh, we went up to North Dakota. Ooh. Another Charger fan, not in Southern not California. In, yeah, not in LA. <laughs> Ran out of California to North Dakota. Yeah, so let's go. Uh, let's go chat with Adam. Excellent. All right, we are back with another fan focus, and this week we have Adam from North Dakota. Thank you so much for coming on, Adam. You bet, Kev. 
cool, man. Well, uh, yeah. So first thing we do, um, as most people know, is how did you become a charger fan? Yeah, it's uh, definitely unique up here in North Dakota. Everybody's a uh, Vikings fan, mostly, um, you know, uh, for a lot of people talking about, you know, their favorite running back, that got to be a Chargers fan being LT, but mine was actually Marion Butts. Nice. So early nineties, early, early nineties playing tech mobile. That's kind of what got me in there. I wanted to be something other than a Vikings fan. So that's uh, kind of got in there. And then sale was a uh, part of that and started following him and struggled through the end of the nineties. Uh, then we got the LT and rivers there uh, and everything else. So now it's, it's been good. Yeah. Same thing here. Like it was definitely the say I was really when I became like a proper charger yeah. fan, like even though I was from San Diego, I was like, that's when it happened for me. But yeah, it's just so crazy that, you know, there's so many fans from all over the country. And how, what is it like being a Charger fan up in North Dakota? Well, you know, the hardest part is actually trying to find them to watch. Uh, you know, I, I've been struggling that way, trying to find a, get a spot to where I can watch them. Uh, I don't have direct TV or anything that way, so it's hard to stream them. Um, you know, and they're not on a lot unless they're doing well. And, and you know, there's not a lot of primetime games, things like that. But yeah. try listening and, you know, with with the internet and everything now you can, you can pretty much watch all the highlights and uh, see a lot of stuff, maybe post post back, but um, you know, having podcasts do keeps me in the loop at least. So that's been, that's been really good over the last, you know, three, four years when podcasting came on and I worked for a seed company up here. So I, I put a lot of miles on the road and, and that keeps, keeps me entertained while I'm driving down the lonely roads up here in the uh, upper plains. But yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about this last game because it like for me it was one of the most disappointing of the season um, in terms of like what Lynn was doing and what the team did. Like, what were your thoughts on the game, um, and what do you want to see happen moving forward the rest of the season? Yeah, I was I was able to listen to the game at least uh, through Sirius, um, you know, and then kind of tracking on my phone, watching the highlights and stuff like that, or watching the lowlights. It seemed like um, you know this the clock management thing has been the biggest thing over the couple of years. And I think Lynn's a good guy and a good motivator, but I don't know that being that head coach, you have to have that, that part of it, I think. And that's probably what he's lacking the most. So, um, you know, and I'm a, I'm a Gus Bradley guy too, cause he's from North Dakota state, uh, Easton stick. We got Carson Wentz playing tonight and, you know, all of the whole North Dakota state thing, uh, you know, following that team, you know, eight out of the last nine national championships, uh, at the uh, FCS level, kind of used to winning on that side and then watching my team on, uh, on Sundays and, and then giving it up every weekend. So I think we got pieces in place. There's a lot of good talent. It's just, uh, I think this coaching thing is finally, you know, I, I try not to be anti-coaching as much, but uh, I think we're getting there. And even, even my guy, Gus, I think we probably have to start looking somewhere else. Yeah. It's such a tough season. And you know, it's a, it's a weird season too, because of COVID and like the kind of how they're able to practice what they're able to do, you know, you don't want to say like, this was a bad year because of that, but it literally Lynn is just not, you know, I was a pro Lynn guy. I loved his commercial when he was like, when he almost yeah. died and then all the people that came back and like, he didn't even know who, what room he was in with the commercial. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember that, but just a great guy, but he's just not doing what we need him to do. So I I'm fully on board with, at this point, after last game, let's start looking. So if, yeah. you know, kind of our last question, let's, let's kind of roll into like, I'm not sure if you know some of the prospects or some of the coaches, like what, what would you like to see happen for our team? Would you like it to be more like an offensive minded coach or a defensive minded coach coming in? You know, I know some of these good offensive minded coaches, like uh, what they have going in green Bay now in San Francisco, Cisco has been working out, but then you look at t Tennessee with Mike Grable too, on that defensive mentality. I, I really like that side more. I've always been a defensive guy and, and run the ball and, and hard nose type thing. So I almost like that defensive look. And then you can find some of these young guys, um, I think, or even Steichen on the offense, you know, be an offensive coordinator. I think he's coming along. So, um, to me, I, I would like that defensive focus maybe, and, and then kind of build something in from the office with all the, all the weapons we have, you would think it'd be easy enough to bring someone in. hundred percent. And it's going to be a very exciting coaching job to people that are going to want it just with our personnel, with Herbert being the monster hail Mary Herbert, like he's doing everything he can to try and win us these games. And it's just, just, just blowing it. So, um, yeah. so, so thoughts we got, you know, new England coming up next week. Um, what do you want to see? Yeah, it's it's been a long time since we've had a good uh, good showing against New England, being fun to fun to knock off Belichick. Even though Brady's not there, it'd still be fun to um, to beat those guys. And and like you said too, with Herbert, I've been been loving how he's been playing. I I was kind of fifty fifty. It wasn't anti Herbert uh, before the draft. It was kind of a flip of the coin with him and Tua, and and looks like the coin landed the right way for us. So 
Um, I think Tua will still be good, but uh, now the way Herbert's playing, it's been crazy. So uh, hopefully he can, uh, you know, keep this thing going. And I don't know, maybe he's just got to take some of the ball in his own hands and, and do some things with it. Absolutely. And there's a lot to be excited about. So it has been a sad year for the Chargers, but, you know, there, there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel and we're going to keep going towards it. Yeah. Being a Chargers fan for just about 30 years, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, this is nothing new. This is just something we live with every year. No. Um, no. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you coming on and, uh, and chatting with us. So uh, thanks again. Right. Yeah. Thanks for checking in. All right. Take it easy. Adam. See ya. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. It's so I love talk. I just love meeting these new Charger fans. Like I'll, you know, shoot people messages on social media and be like, "Hey, you want to come on?" And like we just like <laughs> meet each other right there and then become friends. And it's I, I love fan focuses. So thanks. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for coming on, Adam. We appreciate it. Yeah, I also love listening to your accent. It oh yeah, cracks me up. I wanted to hear you yeah. say oh, yeah. "March, get the car," but uh, maybe next time. <laughs> uh, next time. Appreciate it, Adam. And also, great name. Uh, <laughs> oh adam next, we got we got we got a new um we got to do a voice now for the the twitter questions that's you true yeah, north north, Dakota guy. Uh, uh, north, oh, yeah. i'll have well uh, i don't think adam i'll be able to do it north. as good as adam but uh, i can certainly <laughs> give it a shot uh so now we uh go to ask twitter to talk to the rest of you knuckleheads that seem to like the chargers as much as we do um and we start this off with jace aka fantastic jace who doesn't really ask a good question, but he just says, Matt Patricia at DC. I want nothing to do with Matt Patricia. Yeah. Absolutely I mean, nothing. Yeah. For a guy to get fired partway through the season, uh, and your name isn't Adam Gase. Uh, Dude, I, from, from here on out, being a part of the Belichick coaching tree means nothing. That guy yeah. apparently carried all of them and they don't know what they're doing. And he just told them what to do. So well, no, for what I'm getting is like they're not player coaches. They're very they're all trying to be the the, the Belichick, Belichick like yeah. intensity. Probably doesn't talk to many people. Just kind of like that that intense coach, and it works for Belichick because he's, he's a Belichick. dying breed, man. It's just because he already is there. Yeah, it's not going to work then, for new coaches. Yeah. Patricia felt just just i'm not i'm not that interested in patricia needs to crawl back to new england and hope that belichick has a longer career than than what we are all hoping exactly yeah agreed all right uh thank jace appreciate it now we look over to jay walt 16 uh who asks the question each of you guys number one hc candidate and why it really seems like there's nothing else to talk about right now because it's the elephant in the room. I feel like I'm just waiting for a tweet to go across my timeline saying, Lynn has been fired. All right. Well, I'll start off the <laughs> who I think should be head coach. I, I mean, I'll give two because in, a, in an absolutely perfect world, in my... Uh, <laughs> I know what you're going to say. In my dream <laughs> fantasy... Uh, as soon as you say perfect world, right, I know we who don't you're live talking in it. about. <laughs> uh, yeah. In an absolutely perfect world, I would love nothing more than to see Philip Rivers on the sideline coaching <laughs> the Chargers because I don't think that I truly don't think that there is anybody that is a better fit than Philip Rivers. Uh, but to give a more realistic approach, um, I, I don't watch a lot of other football, so it's hard for me to pick a guy from another team. So Honestly, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing somebody like a Pep Hamilton coming up to do a head coach just because of the the team right now, our biggest get and our future of this franchise is Justin Herbert. And I think if there's anybody that knows how to utilize him the best, it's going to be Pep Hamilton. And I, I know that that's a, this is a stupid call. So, you know, take my opinion with a grain of salt. I am not the coach. But just from a logistic standpoint, seeing somebody that has been successful with Herbert, getting him to be as uh, productive this year as he has been, I would love to see a coach that is uh, geared toward letting that guy cook and giving him the best possibility to win with this team. That'd be interesting. I, I don't I don't think I don't think, I think either one is going to happen, but that's just my yeah. that's just my opinion. 100%. How about some more so, realistic thoughts? Uh, what do you got for us? Huggins? I, you know, the big name is floating around right now, and it has a lot to do with the fact that Kansas City is such a juggernaut. Is uh, Eric Bieniemy? Um, and 
I didn't really do much research on them till this week. And this quite when I saw this question on Twitter, do you guys want to know something really interesting about Eric Bieniemy? Yes, I would love to. He played for the Los Angeles Chargers as wow. a running back from How old is 1990. He? Oh, get no, this gets better from 1991 to 1994. Do you remember what happened to the Chargers in 1994? So he played for the we San went to Diego the Super Chargers. Bowl. So we he, went to he the, played, hang on. He, he played for the San Diego Chargers. Coach is hung up on L.A. or San what Diego. What did I say? You said, I said, Los, Los, you said Los Angeles yeah, Chargers. That's Sorry, wait, was like, is this guy like this 95 guy? years old? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> I don't want him. He's from the black uh, and shit. white days. I, I yeah. messed up the big reveal. So he was on the Super Bowl San Diego Chargers okay. team. Um, that's cool and he's he's that's, a basically he's some, he's, some an, ties. he's he's an extension of of lynn because he was a running back he played running back for us behind natron means obviously um he was a charger as opposed to lynn being a bronco so mm. it's easy comparison so to make. Oh, i like it is lynn sabotaging the chargers right now <laughs> he's playing the long know. game <laughs> but he's hitting the john elway or chit-chatting every week maybe here's here's what i'm thinking because how I'm feeling about Lynn right now, this quote, you know, beginning of the season, I'd be like, oh, I don't like that guy. But what he said, what Lynn said about being me, I'm kind of making me like being me now. Uh, Lynn said he was a fierce competitor of mine when we played against each other. Um, I can't say I liked him. He is the definition of a competitive prick, said Lynn. <laughs> so that's what Lynn thinks about um, being me. And you know what? I'm all about competitive pricks. You know, yeah. The key word I take I'm out of that, that is competitive. Like, yeah, I, I I would love to have a coach that <laughs> is competitive and not. I don't know, dude. Every coach is competitive. They just don't know how to. They don't know. That doesn't mean they're aggressive. It doesn't mean they know what they're doing. Like any Joe Schmo that I meet at the basketball court on a Tuesday night is competitive. <laughs> well, right now, well, he is my leading who I think would be awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, former Charger, here's Joe Schmo he's the biggest is the offensive coordinator the for a Super head Bowl. Coaching Team, no, not just a jersey from that, a basketball what, court. Chat, but... Let me talk. Here's where <laughs> I'm not I'm finished. Not... <laughs> why, are you, why is it your turn? I'm not done with my point. Okay, go ahead. Finish. Okay, I'm finished. Okay. Wow. I'm not buying the hype train of Eric Binney whatsoever. Um, why? Okay, I'll, I'll explain. He's the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Their head coach is everyone would say is arguably one of the offensive geniuses of our generation. How much of this offense is the enemy and how much of it is being hand fed to him? Similar to a Belichick Patricia situation. I how think much Andy Reid calls all the plays too. So exactly. So this the yeah. enemy is getting a lot of credit for doing a whole lot of nothing. The last <laughs> time he was an offensive coordinator was for the university of Colorado at Boulder, the Buffalo they were the 104th ranked offense in college football. And now he's the pop. Okay. You have Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Oh, real tough to call some plays when you have Andy Reid telling you what to call. I don't buy into it whatsoever. It, it, that's not to say that he's not going to be a great coach, but with what I know about the man, I'm not going to say yes, please. I cannot. I, this is the one guy that I want. He may be a great coach. He may turn out great. But I I just don't I don't see what everyone else is seeing as far as he's an offensive minded genius that's going to be able to come in here and replicate that for the Chargers. He's also coming in to be the head coach, not the offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, we've all seen we're currently experiencing a head coach that tries to muddle too much with an offensive coordinator. Here's as I go into the guys that I am kind of looking at. Uh, I'm not super excited about anyone because if <laughs> they were the great candidate, they'd already be a head coach. Um, but here, here's the things that I kind of thought about um, with our potential new head coach. We're not in a rebuild, right? Our roster is not at the position of a rebuild. I don't want to just take a chance on somebody that has absolutely no like previous experience or at least has like done it in multiple multiple places. Um, I'm not ready to just take a chance on someone and forfeit um, a good chunk of Justin Herbert's career and at the end of Joey Bosa's. Like I'm, I'm not really to take that chance because we're not in a rebuild. We have the roster to compete next year. Um, our QB has never had consistency in his football career. He's never had it. At Oregon, he had three offensive coordinators in his four years as a quarterback. 
Mm. It, 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 he's never had any consistency. Mm. So here, here's what I want. I want somebody that is somewhat proven, has maybe even done the job before, um, which goes against what I usually like because if he's did the job good before, he'd still have the job. Um, but that being said, we have a good, what I think is a good offensive coordinator in place. And he's obviously already had a year under his belt with Justin. Justin's already started to build some familiarity with the system, the scheme, the terminology. What I would love is for Shane Steichen to stay in place and we hire a defensive minded head coach that then brings on a defensive coordinator that he can somehow have influence on. Calling plays as a defensive coordinator is a lot different than an offensive coordinator. I'm, I, I think it would be more beneficial for a head coach to have maybe an influence on that side of the ball uh, and then be a little bit more aware of when to call timeouts when you're on offense. Um, so the two guys that I've kind of highlighted, um, and I, I apologize as I don't pronounce his name, his last name correct. It's it's kind of goofy, but Matt Eberflus, he's the Colts defensive coordinator currently. Um, this is just from my brief research of what I did, looking at some of the potential candidates for next year. Um, so he's the defensive coordinator for the Colts. Um, he has a track record of being able to, to develop guys. He doesn't just get a good roster and then just do like, just make it happen. Cause he's just stacked. Uh, he takes guys and rebuilds them. For instance, this year, Xavier Rhodes um, has had a breakout like career altering year. Um, now that his first year under this guy as his DC, he was with Dallas for a really long time. He was Cleveland for a while. He's over 10 years of experience in the NFL. Um, and what, what I love to see when I did a little research is people say that he has a willingness to adapt his scheme to the players he has. He's not, I'm, I'm, I'm a four, three cover three, no matter who's on my team, he's willing to adapt what it, what he has with the roster that he has. Cause you don't always get to build perfectly to fit your scheme. Um, so that's one guy. He's a little bit more of a flyer because he's never been a head coach before. Um, but if we're, like I said, I, I want to take a chance with somebody that's, that's been in the league um, and has a defensive minded. The other guy that I don't think is going to be a popular opinion. I'm pro probably going to some, some listeners that aren't, that don't agree. Uh, but Todd Bowles, he's with, he was with the jets for a few years, did not have extremely successful seasons. Um, it didn't really go as planned, but the jets are kind of a, dumpster fire i don't i don't like i don't know anyone that has had a successful coaching career there right um he's he's a he's the dc in tampa right now and obviously that defense is is has been performing at, a, at an elite level um and he has head coaching experience he's been there he's done that he's not going to get in over his head he knows at least what the position looks like a little bit um, so those are kind of the two guys that I, I think like there may be other guys out. we may go college, but to me, I just don't think we're in a rebuild. Like the Panthers going after rule this year. That's okay. They're in a rebuild. I just, I, the, 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 the Cardinals, when they went after, uh, Kif, Cliff Kingsbury, they were in a rebuild. That's okay. Like, I just don't think we're in that position. I want somebody that's somewhat more established in the league that can come in and facilitate us to be a great team right away. What, what, do you, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? This is crazy. It's a crazy idea. Yeah. What if, what if we go <laughs> to whatever nursing home he's in and we get us a Marty Schottenheimer back for oh a couple God. years? No. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he can no. bring in Brian Schottenheimer, which is the reason he got fired in the first place, to come be his offensive coordinator, I believe. I don't want that. No, 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 sweet Marty. <laughs> whatever, dude. Don't hate on the elderly. The only college coach that I would be down to 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 hear about is Urban Meyer because that would be sweet. Although he's questionable how he gets his victories, he gets his victories. So <laughs> yeah. I, that would be kind of cool, but that's not gonna happen. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Jay Walt. Gave us a lot to talk about there. Uh, next, we've got uh, an old favorite, Salty Sports guy, aka Salty Sports Dude, who asked the question. At what point do we sink for Sewell, plunge for Penny? Sort of kidding. I hate the idea of tanking, but I have officially lost all confidence in this coaching staff. And I'm wondering if it's time to start thinking about off-season moves to build for the future. I like that voice. I, I don't think you have to worry about tanking. I just don't think we're going to win many more games I, playing I, like yeah, this. I, think I don't think we're going to have to try to lose. <laughs> we don't yeah. have to try. It's just gonna, we're about to run into our AFC West here pretty soon. We have New England and one more. Who, who's our other? Uh, 
Atlanta? Yes. Yeah. The game we were supposed to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we have, you know, look what we have. We have New England. We have Atlanta. Then we have the AFC West. Like, I, Atlanta just beat the Raiders 40 something to three, which is them. pretty sweet yeah. spanking. Um, I, I don't even think you need to worry about it. I think the plunge for Penne is, you know, good work. <laughs> I think you need to be at what was a top five or four pick. We're um, top five right now. We're number five right now. So I don't, yeah, I, so yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to have to try hard to yeah. beat top five. No, I think that would be exactly what we need. We need to get a stronger offensive line. Give this kid time. We cl- he clearly can work with you know some practice squad wide receivers. Like he's doing what Phil did forever with using no name guys and making them names. So I give give him his offensive line. I don't think we need to worry about it because I don't know how many more games we're gonna win. And I hate I hate to say that, but after as long as Lynn's at the helm, I have no confidence. Right. It, it's. It's not pessimistic. It's it's realistic at this realistic. point. Realistic, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, thank you, salty sports guy. Always appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Tyler Neiman, aka Ty Nine Two Nine Five O, who asked the question: If Lynn goes seven to nine, do you think he keeps his job? No, no, <laughs> no. He's gone, no. dude. He is out. I mean, I think it was funny that I mean, looking back a couple weeks ago, when Kyle was like, "If we can go eight and eight. <laughs> Then Lynn might still have a job, but it all now we're seven and nine. And like he's no, gone. Not even seven and nine. I don't think there's, <laughs> there's no, no chance. No, nothing that we can do. Yeah. Yeah. I, even if we went out, uh, that would he won't get the credit for it. It'll no, be the players. Absolutely. He's already won't. lost face. It's yeah, over. Yeah. 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 I don't think so. Uh, and which is unfortunate. But thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. All right. Next, we've got Aaron, aka Vrabel fifty six, who asked the question. Fuck Lynn and Spanos, too, if they don't fire him. Uh, not really a question, but uh, we always appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Aaron. I, I, that was the best request it. for a voice. He asked for a Microsoft, for a translation, Microsoft voice. translation voice. Can you do that one more time? Do it again, do it again. Do it again, dude. Fuck Lynn and Spanos, too, if they don't fire him. <laughs> <laughs> What's best is let's see this one, two, three, oh my four, God. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna be bleeping ten percent of this <laughs> sentence. So oh. Oh. <laughs> leave it. I think if we're gonna leave one, no, leave, leave a cuss that word. One. Yeah. Well, it's gonna we're be two at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're not, uh, we're not getting any money anyway. Uh, that, that's awesome. yeah. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> what what yeah. investors are we going to disappoint? Um, <laughs> no one. <laughs> no one. Mom and dad. There you go. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> um, all right. Next, we've got uh, an old favorite, Tyler Foffey, aka Iowa Bolt Fan Fifty Four, who asked the question. <laughs> Bosa had one hell of a game. And Tillery was also playing opposite for him for the majority of snaps. Bosa is obviously a beast, but did Tillery help him more than Ingram had in the past games this season? <laughs> Where does Coach Kyle see Tillery going from here outside versus inside? Okay, bye. <laughs> and knitting. <That's> so good. <laughs> and knitting. <laughs> so I think I think if our scheme changes at all. I think if we're running a 3-4, I think Tillery makes a lot of sense on that outside position. It's a little bit more of a head-up four, so you have to be a little bit more physical. Um, but I think if we're still in a 4-3, Tillery adds that pass rush from the inside. That That's why we drafted him. We want him to be the guy that pushed the pocket from that three-tech. Um, so he obviously, I don't, honestly, I don't think that Tillery helped Bosa. I think Bosa was just a beast and pissed off and right. made a bunch of plays. Um, if anything, but, yeah. Tillery had some really bad personal fouls that kind of f***ed up some of our yeah. some of the stops we were making so i wasn't thrilled with tillery on this game yeah it, it i don't know if that's just him not used to playing in that position or if he was just being too aggressive and not aware of his surroundings i guess i don't know yeah maybe a little bit of both might have been a little yeah. bit of both but yeah excellent thank you tyler uh next we've got uh ghost ghost underscore aka at ghost underscore who Ask the question. <laughs> now that we are pretty much out of the playoffs and the season is shit and Lynn blamed the drop passes and poor throws, not one word on coaching. What are you more looking forward to? The draft or new head coach? <laughs> he must have friends. <laughs> Ghost asked for uh, a dark night there. So there you go. 
Oh, I, it's a good, good question. question. Are, are we looking more forward to the draft or a head coach? I kind of want to see a coach. Um, I think it's it's going to be more like because you know, that's what's going to tell you so... what what you're going to get. Well, the question is, do we have a new GM? Do you guys no. think Tommy T is going anywhere? I think I think Tommy T is fine. I'm just going to say it now. People want to throw the Our baby boy Craig out with from the Texas water. had some hot takes on Twitter about Tommy T and his true drafting ability and people falling to him and. But, the, but I saw that too, but he also didn't mention the undrafted free agents that Tommy T got. So I'm it's he may, you know, you can make these stats look the way you want, but I have no problem with Tommy T. I don't. Okay. So and, Tommy T is there. So the hit the coaching position will probably be filled pretty quick. I, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm a little bit more excited about the coaching um, move um, because I think that our, our roster's pretty solid you know i i think we all expect an offensive lineman in the first round um it, it's not like last year where we were like excited about who our next quarterback is going to be um so i think i think yeah there's more flash to hiring a head coach than there is to hiring um a right a left tackle i agree completely same page like the the excitement of last year's draft isn't going to be at that level anymore for us just because we don't have to go for a quarterback anymore, like you said. So, it's But there, I'm still going to be excited for the draft. Oh, I'm of not course. To say that it's, I'm not. It's, it's awesome, but I think the idea of a, a new coach with a new system or whatever is going to happen, because w- like we said, new head coach comes with new coordinators and new this and new that. And, that. and I think that's also why if you get rid of the head coach, I don't think Tommy T is going anywhere because you were just saying it. It's like this is an opportunity where our roster is in place to do something. So to totally reset said everything doesn't make any sense to me at this point um so i I think the head coach whatever direction we go in is going to be the most interesting uh off-season storyline yeah you you know you said that we expect to draft an o-lineman dude i've expected us to draft an o-lineman every freaking year so i don't think it's a slam dunk that we're getting a lineman i never think that for sure if we do I'll I'll be singing their praises, but I am not holding my breath on <laughs> drafting an O lineman. It wouldn't surprise me if we do something that we all feel is completely unnecessary. But we'll find out. Uh, we'll see what happens when we get to the draft. And yeah, I agree. I think a new head coach. I think a new head coach is more exciting because he gives you more to look into. A new draft prospect, all you really have to look at is their coaching or their not coaching their college career. So. I think a coach, a new coach is you're going to have a lot more to analyze and break down. And I think that's going to be a little bit more exciting. Um, but thank you, ghost. Appreciate it. And lastly, uh, toasty ghosty, AKA Panda puppy eight, who has asked for a voice that I don't know that I can totally pull off, but I'm going to give it my darndest. (laughs) I honestly don't know what there is to say anymore. This season Seems like it could be one building for the future. (laughs) There seems to be little hope left of making the playoffs, but I still don't want us to tank. I just hope Herbert doesn't die and can finish this year off healthy. (laughs) For the drunk Irishman. That was my my drunk Irishman. Oh. Uh, Oh, dude! We in this episode we've introduced drunk Irishman and Microsoft voice. We did. Yeah, the Microsoft <laughs> one is that's my favorite. Oh, so I'm playing, Outside dude. of the the Tokyo <laughs> Arnold, yeah. Um, uh, playoffs are gone. Playoffs are gone. Yeah, I I think mathematically we're still in it, but they're gone. There's no way. That's, we just got to be realistic. And we're I was talking to Wooldog about this before we started the podcast. I was just like, I'm changing my my game day, my routine, my stuff, because I can't be as invested as I have been leading up to this. Like, Lynn broke me this last game. Like, I (laughs) I just need to kind of take a step back. I still love my team, but I just need to take a step back from the intensity that I bring on Sundays when I'm in my my office by myself watching football. It's just not healthy. Yeah. I don't think we'll tank. I I mean, because that's the thing. When When I watch Joey Bosa's post game interview, I mean, he still wants to go out there and perform. And because every every game, those guys are being judged. So if somebody goes out there and drags ass, they're just hurting their future with either the team or possibly going to any other team uh, getting paid. So I don't think that we're going to tank, but I think realistically, knowing the opponents that we're up against, uh, again, three of those being the AFC West that we have not beat, 
in quite a while, it's it's not looking good. So I don't think we're going to have to try too hard uh, to get to that position. So uh, thank you, Toasty. Appreciate it. Always good to hear from you. And uh, coming out of this Ask Twitter, uh, I guess uh, Huggin reached out to quite a few of you on Twitter, and some of you sent in some sound bites. Some of you were pretty vocal. I better not hear any funny voices. I swear to God, if any of you guys are pulling funny voices and trying to steal my, <laughs> trying to steal my job, Ooh, I'm no, I don't know, dude. Microsoft guy kind of puts yeah, you was, on the uh, the top was of the another mountain. pedestal, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just we, we reached out. I reached out on Twitter, just like no, letting everybody know if, if you have something to say, and keep it under thirty seconds and shoot us a, a voice recording to the charger chat at yahoo.com. So. Um, uh, we're, we're taking them. So if after the game you want to get your get your recording on just shoot it over to us and we 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 love to as much fan interaction the better that's what what this podcast is all about big time so um yeah let's let's dig it in we got some uh some some people from all over the world in this i was it was very awesome yeah. to get these recordings we're, we're gonna start it off jumping over the pond and talking to alex briggs from the uk it's got to be time it's got to sack them all sack the lot sack all the coaches let's start again clean house <laughs> Excellent. I, I agree. I Kill them all. To a certain extent. Kill them all. Yeah. Let God sort them out. Sack the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Kill them all. Let God sort them out. Yeah, like that. The way he sounded, it sounded like he recorded right when the game was over. Like yeah, there was no was time to analyze passion. it. That yeah. was just immediate passion, and I couldn't agree with that. I felt the exact same yeah. way after that game. We're, we're with you, Alex, yeah. for sure. Uh, sack the lot. Sack the lot. Sack, sack all of them. We got a title for the for the episode. <laughs> That's it. Sack the lot. Oh, That's the name of this one. Where, congratulations, Alex Briggs. You are the winner of the sack title. Sack the lot. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, toss it over to Scott from OC. Oh, hey, guys. It's Scott from Orange County. God, that was a gut wrencher. I don't know. Like, look, I've tried my best to stay away from the fire Anthony Lynn bandwagon. But after this game, I'm just going to have to hop on. I mean, we cannot have Bosa playing well, Herbert holding on for dear life, and you mismanage the clock that way and put up those plays. We we just can't. Uh, So my question for you guys is, what do you think our record will be now? Because... I want to say eight and eight, but with Anthony Lynn still around, I don't even know if we can even get that. Uh, yeah, so let me know. Uh, just keep on bolting up. Okay, love you. Bye. <laughs> love it. Thank you, yeah, Scott. Yeah, dude. I, I honestly, like, just looking at this, if, if our track record says anything, I think we maybe get one one win left in us. You know, probably Atlanta or this week if we run into Cam Newton, who's playing like trash and. Our deep, we just don't suck. I, I think realistically, we probably have one one win left in us, and that's just yeah. me becoming realistic all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, I think we either get Denver or Atlanta, depending on what Atlanta shows up. We've never played the Patriots. <laughs> and depending well, on who's just, just being in Denver, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, if they have a quarterback. Um, yeah, I I I think I agree. One, two wins at best, so we either have four or five wins in the year. Right. Yeah, I I think. I don't see us getting any better than four and 12. Me, I mean, nah, I, it just, it doesn't seem feasible. It doesn't seem possible at this point. So if we win, Hey, cool. That's great. But I, I don't see it happening in any way, shape or form. Wow. We got, we turned into really negative podcast. No, all yep, of a sudden, no guys. not pessimistic. It's, realistic. It's just a little more realistic. realistic. We're three and okay. seven, yeah. three and eight. What do you want? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Now we turn over to sad Chargers fan. Hmm. I feel you. Hey, guys. This is Alex, also known as sad Chargers fan. Um, I don't know what to say other than this is embarrassing. Uh, Lynn sucks as a head coach, and we are still the laughing stock of at least the AFC West. Um, the broadcasters say it all the time. We're just bad. Yeah, I'm tired of the broadcasters personally. Like, <laughs> oh my, you don't God. have to tell us, dude. I know we know that we suck. Well, it, it was it, the the thing with this last. So I actually listened to the broadcasters on this game. It's like they definitely it, they weren't favoring the other team too as much, but they were definitely throwing shade at Lynn, right? Which was good because that's exactly how I was feeling when they were saying it. So I wasn't even that bothered by they it. They weren't pulling any punches. Um, no. Yeah. So it's it's just <laughs> sucks, man. It's just Anthony Lynn. Yeah. I, I'm embarrassed suck. as well. It's not. Yeah. It's it's an embarrassing thing that we're 
product that we're putting out on the field and no one feels good about it. At least when we were close, you could blame it on bad breaks and man, how could we lose that game? Right. And we find new ways to lose. Right. Now it's just, we're getting our butt kicked. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Thank you, sad chargers fan. Appreciate that. Uh, next we've got Simon Schum. Hmm. You going to bring an Arnold voice, Simon? This uh, is Arnold from Hong Kong. So another very depressing loss, huh? And, uh, I, I, I don't really know what to say. It's uh, 2 a.m. in Hong Kong right now, so... <sighs> can can we let our coach walk back to uh, L.A. If, if that's even possible? I mean, at this point, I, I, I want him to not get on the plane back home and just walk back to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could, I could not have said it better myself, Simon. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, that's he must uh, he must be shamed. He must be uh, ridiculed <laughs> yeah. out in public. And we can all walk with the, uh, with shame the bells. bells. Yeah, shame, 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 shame. shame. Uh, that's not going to happen though. He'll go quietly and peacefully because that's what the <laughs> like Chargers a, do. Like a fart in the wind, he'll be gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Appreciate thanks, Simon. it. And lastly, yeah, thanks, uh, you know him, you love him. It's Craig from Texas. Hey, gents. Craig in Texas. Sorry for the low energy, but today is not a good day, and I'm sure you guys can relate. Yesterday was a complete dumpster fire, a train wreck. Any other colorful phrases or adjectives, go ahead and insert in blank. It's time to tear it down, guys. Anthony Lynn is a great human being, a phenomenal individual, terrible head football coach. If we're talking about mentorship or following the guy as a leader, he's pretty much ideal. When it comes to coaching the game of football, it's just not his bag. It's time to look forward to the future. Got the Patriots up on deck next. Not sure what to expect for the rest of the year, but, I mean, we're here. This is our team. We've got to support them. Either way, looking forward to what you guys feel about the rest of the season. I feel like I ask this question every week. But I'm always curious to know what your thoughts and opinions are on where we go from here. And really, honestly... Here's one for you. Who are you guys interested in as the next head coach of the team? There's one for you. Talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bo ganger don't bang. Later. Well, I'm glad you asked this again, Craig, because I changed my um, pick from earlier because Kyle uh, <laughs> clearly did about five minutes more research than I did. And uh, I don't want to go with... Um, I, like I found a better fun. article than you did. <laughs> yeah, he found I, one I really did one good one more article Google search than you. <laughs> I'm not Eric Bieniemy anymore. I honestly have no idea. Um, Harbaugh, Michigan, maybe not not happening. I don't know. I don't know enough about the coaches. Yeah, I I think here's the thing though. I mean, Craig mentioning that this last game was just a complete dumpster fire. Like, I don't necessarily feel like this game was a complete dumpster fire. Because there was obvious coaching wise, coaching wise, absolutely was a complete dumpster fire. There, there were so many. It, that's what sucks. Being a Charger is good things happen in bad games. <laughs> like right. you get you get people like Joey Bosa performing out of his mind. You get people like Eckler back. You know, getting over a hundred all-purpose yards. Um, you've got Herbert still slinging the ball, throwing over three hundred yards. Like that's that's the, the the worst part about being a Charger fan is you got this talented roster of people that can make these plays and we just we still walk away with with an L like that's that I feel like is what is most frustrating about being a Charger fan so it, it's that's me summing it up <laughs> so yep. thank you Craig from Some. Texas I appreciate appreciate every appreciate all of you for reaching out to us uh if you're not already be sure to go over to Twitter and start following us at Charger Chat Pod uh, we could be asking your questions here on the podcast, or you could be sending in uh, some sound bites that we could be playing, and you can hear yourself on the radio. Uh, or if you say <laughs> something really funny on Twitter, I will probably message you to come on for a fan focus. Yeah, you could so. be fan focused, and what you say might end up being the title of the episode. So uh, anything is possible in this world. And, sack the lot. <laughs> and sack the lot. So uh, next game, as we, I think, have mentioned, is going to be the New England Patriots. Uh, they're currently sitting at a slightly better record at five and six. Uh, apparently Newton just finished nine of 18 
passes for 84 yards with no touchdowns, two interceptions, and a 23.6 passer rating. Wow. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what we're – that's pretty awful. That is pretty um, awful. But if any team is going to make him look good, it's probably going to be the Chargers. Could be us. <laughs> so we got – it's just the Patriots, man. It's always been a problem for right. us whether they have – you know, I don't. Well, remember. the problem is they're well coached. They don't have the talent this year. They don't have the the roster, but they're always well coached, and their special teams are always good. They don't mess up. They don't blow. Just completely blow it. They're going to be in the game. Um, and this Patriots team, like most, have a very very good running game. Mm-hmm. Um, Cam Newton's never going to blow you away with passing to statistics. If he has a two hundred yard passing game, he's pretty much unstoppable because of his ability to run the ball. Um, so it, it, we're going to have to do a lot better than we did this week against the run, um, because they're, they're a top 10 running defense or running offense. So, um, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, we'll have to, we'll have to make some adjustments. Yeah. They're fifth in rushing They're 150 yards per game right now. Right. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's going to be a challenge for our defense to, to make some adjustments and, and step up and make plays. Right. And, and also familiar face on the Patriots, their leading tackler is Adrian Phillips. Oh, that's right. Oh, good. That's right. Yeah, Seventy-two that. tackles on the season so far for oh, Mr. I love Phillips. Damn that. it. Um, it was also interesting. I saw a tweet from Fernando Ramirez on um on Twitter. <laughs> Patriots head coach Bill <laughs> Belichick. <laughs> I saw this thing on Twitter from Twitter. Good this, work, this Kevin. This tweet on Twitter. I don't know if you guys have heard yeah. of it. Yeah, <laughs> real smart one there, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Um, Patriots head coach Bill Belichick on Chargers QB Justin Herbert. He is really solid. He has no weaknesses. Smart kid handles things well. Game plan, line of scrimmage, fast, athletic, can extend plays, and hard to tackle. Takes hits and throws the ball and comes back and does it again. So he's got a man crush. I'm a little worried he's going to find a loophole to get Herbert on his team next year. I well, dude that or, or or he comes on over to Herbert. You know, Herbert's the shiny keys that were jingling Touché. at him and Bill Belichick waddles over like a toddler and oh, says, man. "I'll come over here." <laughs> I can see him waddling. <laughs> his cut-off sweatshirt waddling. He'd look way cooler in cut-off sweatshirts and cut- he wouldn't have to wear a sweatshirt. He could just wear cut-off shirts and, <laughs> and wear just shorts. What if he was wearing shorts? Can you imagine Belichick in shorts? <laughs> Yeah, I could actually. In his new balances, he'd be sick. <laughs> Smooth old man legs. All right. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's stop uh, fantasizing over a possible Belichick coach and let's look at some of our bolt predictions. What are you thinking, uh, Huggin? 2120 Chargers. 2120 Chargers. 350 yards from Herbert. Ooh. 350? 350. 350. 350. Quite 50. I'm, I'm going to need about a tree. Well, he does, dude. He throws 300 <laughs> in his sleep. The guy just had a, one of his worst games and he still threw 300 yards. Yeah. So 350, Herbert. 350. All right. 2120 Chargers because I can't not pick the Chargers. Well, Sorry. Let's see if uh, Coach feels the same way. What are you thinking, Coach? I think I'm going to have to do it, guys. No. I, I I just got to throw it out there and see if it works. <laughs> As a podcast in our existence, we've picking the chosen the Chargers to win <laughs> it's every only worked single nine week, times. <laughs> and it, about a third of the time it it works. <laughs> so I, I I hope I don't. I'm probably gonna get some hate for this, but I'm gonna go Patriots twenty, Chargers seventeen, um, and a Bosa pick to to finish wow. off his magnet. That's the only thing he was missing last wow. week. Wow. <laughs> just a pick or a pick six. I mean, if we're going to get bold, let's, let's go nuts. I think nuts? when you choose, when you pick the chargers to lose, when we do our graphic on Instagram, I don't think you have control over what picture I put in there. <laughs> Not so lately. It might be a shit show. I've been a little kid the last two weeks. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you don't send me your photos. <laughs> Bad baby. Bad baby. Bad baby. What do you got? Wool dog. Bring us home. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 1610 Chargers. I think we've Ooh. lost complete faith in Badgley and he is not kicking anymore. We are strictly going two point conversions. And that's <laughs> so my bold two prediction. Touchdowns. Two touchdowns, two two point conversions. All right. That's look where we are, boys. Look where we've come. I know. <laughs> look how far we've gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. All right. Well. Jeez Louise, if you've stuck with us this far through the episode, thank you so much 
We appreciate it. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, thanks for Karen. sticking around. Always thanks to Karen. Thanks, thanks, Karen. <laughs> thanks Karen. Love Karen. The only one still listening. Uh, <laughs> no, thanks to all of you guys. Everybody that reaches out and talks to us, interacts with us. Yes, absolutely. Cannot you thank you awesome. enough. Uh, it always uh, warms the cockles of my heart when I see the the views <laughs> and the cock. listens to the podcast. <laughs> easy, easy. That was a softball. You did. <laughs> you said it. You said it. Not me. Let's look it up. All right. Let's get out of this. That's going to do it for us here at Charlie. Archer chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsors. Do you have a coach that just doesn't understand what's going on? Then you need to download the newest update to Google Translate. Now, Google Translate has a new language, Anthony Lynn. Now you can talk to Anthony Lynn in his language. See how it works. Austin was tackled in bounds, and you let 15 seconds tick off the clock before you took the timeout. Why, why not take the timeout earlier there to save time? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Now let's turn on Google Translate to see how it works. Coach, we all know you did an amazing job and could do no wrong. Who else can you blame today for the loss besides yourself? You know, we dropped some balls early, we threw some bad balls. Uh, at times, we didn't run it consistently. We were just out of sync, but we have to be better offensively for sure. Now you've got it. Be sure to download the newest update today so you can talk to Anthony Lynn in his language. Coach, even though I am a human being and I did not ask you to compare me to a motor vehicle, what motor vehicle am I most like? You ain't no Lamborghini, all right? You are, you are F-150. Download the newest update today on Google Play or the App Store. The newest language on Google Translate, Anthony Lin. But we just keep stacking bricks every single day, okay? Just getting better every single day. That's all we can focus on. That's all we can control. I can't do that, coach.